Hello, this is Roger, Low Vision Product Manager here at Humanware. And in this video, I am going to demonstrate the assembly of an all-in-one PC. So if you've watched the previous unboxing, you saw that this comes out of the box uh, with, uh, with a camera and an adaptive kit. Uh, and I also showed in that video that uh, you will have a seal on the top edge of the box next to the handle that you will need to cut with a knife. And to the right and left of that seal are two tabs that you will need to pull out. Now, when you lift the lid on this, you will see some tips uh, not to hold the LCD screen uh, on the machine, as well as some basic unpacking instructions there. Uh, so I'll go ahead and lift this up again and lift that lid all these flaps back. And I will point out to you uh, one important thing here. Uh, this fatter side, uh, you want that to come out on the top because that's where the pieces and parts of the all-in-one uh, will be found. So uh, in the illustration, it did show that you can turn this box uh, upside down like this. If you do that, you'll want to be very careful as things come out because again, you can see here there are items on this side. So I've got it out this far now. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and slide it the rest of the way out. Let's put this big box aside at this time. So here you can see the contents of the all-in-one uh, PC box. Now I will note, I have also gone through here and taken the items out of their plastic wrapping. So you will have to unwrap each of those um, as part of this process. So here in this brown cardboard box, we'll open this up here, flip it over on the front edge here, uh, and there's a tab that I pull out there, open this up, and inside of here, I find my all-in-one keyboard and my mouse. So let's go ahead and take those out of the box. Now these are wired, so they, they are tucked away in the side of the box here. So I'm going to take each of those out and set them to my left and we will come back to those in a little bit. So those are my keyboard and mouse, those away, and we will put their box aside. Again, take note, I am on a large flat surface here. Uh, definitely the best place to do this, a countertop, a tabletop like this, or even on the floor if you're able to get down to that level, which I am not. Uh, here is a mouse, didn't take that out of the plastic wrapping, uh, but I'm gonna set that aside. We will need that for the demonstration here. And then underneath of here is a user manual. Uh, this does, does have some assembly instructions. They are uh, generally small, but there is a good layout of the different ports and where things are at. Um, and then there is a warranty card uh, there as well. So I'm going to set those aside too. Uh, working our way away from um, where I'm sitting, uh, in the center here, a large rectangular block. Uh, this is going to be the battery uh, pack that we will insert. So this is your UPS or universal power source. Uh, this will provide you up to an hour of um, charge after power goes out, should you experience a power outage. Uh, we will come back to this in just a moment as well. I'll set that over here by my mouse. Uh, next up, let's continue uh, with the power supplies in the uh, upper right corner here away from me. Uh, these are the power supplies. So here I find my power cord. Uh, this one is, in fact, still wrapped with a tie band. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that off. Uh, we will need that shortly, and we'll set that to my far right over here. Uh, the other item in there is the uh, charging block. And I guess we can go ahead and assemble this right now, uh, but the, there's two ends to this. One is where my power cable that I set aside a moment ago will plug in. Notice these... Uh, this plug is in a triangular shape and there is a triangular port on uh, the end of this charging block. I'm going to go ahead and insert that in there. Uh, so then I have this end that will go into my power source and the other end uh, is a plug that has a little purple ring on it that will go into my computer uh, a little bit later in the process here. Setting that to the right. Uh, next up uh, in the back center here, uh, we'll lift this out, is the mounting uh, bar for the monitor, which we will take out of the box in just a few moments as well. It has a little plastic up here. I'll go ahead and take that off right now. Again, remember, these were all in plastic before, so you'll have to remove that as part of the process. 
I believe the last item here on this side of the box is the stand itself. So I'm going to take that out. It is a nice little triangular shape. It has a very small footprint uh, when you set it up on your table or desktop. Um, but on when I invert this over, you will see a little key on the bottom here, silver, uh, that we will use to screw this in to the stand in just a moment. I set that to my left. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove this box here. Oh, I heard one more item there. So down here with my power supplies is my cable organizer. So we will go ahead and apply that in just a few moments as well. So we're done with this side of the box. We will remove that now. And the last item that is here now is the all-in-one PC monitor itself, 24 inches. So before I take it out of the box, I'm going to tilt it up here. Um, and show you the different, let's take it out of the uh, styrofoam first. And so you can see it a little bit better here if I can get a hold of it. There we go. So across here, uh, starting from left to right, again, this is away from me. There's a notched out area here that I can feel a large notch in this. Um, I have, I'm gonna work from my left to my right. Uh, there is the port where my power will go in. There is an HDMI port for video out, uh, so I can send video out from my PC. There is a VGA cable, so that's an older style connection if you need to connect a VGA cord. Uh, then continuing to the right in the very center um, are two USB ports. To the right of that is an ethernet port. If you uh, need to connect to a LAN, you can connect a cable connection to your network there. Continuing to the right, uh, these are indicated in a little aqua color, are two more USB ports. And then you will find your microphone port and a jack for uh, your earphones if you're using earphones with the uh, monitor as you're using your computer. So I'm gonna lower this back down again and slide it a little bit further away from me. Um, oh, I, there's one more thing I want to show here because before I assemble this on this bottom edge here, lift this back up one more time here. Um, so there is uh, to my left right now, there's the port, I'm opening it right here. It's a little door. That's where my battery is going to go in. And then to the far left uh, is my power, uh, power button. You can feel it right there. So again, this is where that adaptive kit could come in helpful. It's a little bit hidden on the bottom once we get it assembled. So you might want to apply one of those adaptive kit labels there as an indicator of where the power button is. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Um, I have my power supply here. This is going to slide into uh, the unit in this door. So let's go ahead and take care of that while we're right here right now. So I'll go ahead and set it up against the door there. And I notice, oh, it doesn't want to go in. So don't force it. If you feel it get stuck like that, there is a little lever here. I'm going to rotate this over and try again. And now it slides right in and clicks in place. Now you'll notice that there is a, a 12 volt USB-C uh, connection there, as well as another USB connection. Uh, and a power button if you need to check the charge there. So uh, you can check the charge. Now, if you need to take this out, there is this little lever in the center of it that you can pull and you can take it right back out again. I'm going to leave it in. So again, if you start to place that in there and it doesn't want to go, don't force it. Take it out, rotate it over and try again. So now it is clicked into place there. So we won't have to deal with that later. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and assemble our stand. So let's go ahead and bring slide this away and bring these two pieces in. So I have my the foot of my stand and then I have the upright arm that I'm going to connect. So this will go into the round center area of the stand with this silverish end that's opposite the monitor mount. And I'll try to place that in there and mine went in straight away. So you can see that this, this rectangular or square area is facing towards the triangle of the stand here. Uh, so I got it the right way. But if I was trying to put it in the wrong way, notice um, that is not wanting to go in at all in any of those other locations. So you can sort of rotate till you feel and it will drop right into place. At this point, I need to rotate this over so I can find that little key on the bottom. It is a little silver key that flips up and down and I need to screw that into place to tighten it. I notice 
as I'm doing this, that there is uh, the ability to use a screwdriver on there if I want. And I could flip this little handle down and use a screwdriver. Um, just remember, you don't have to get like super tight here. You want to get it good and snug. You know, finger tight is good enough here. And I'll fold that back into place. And now that is assembled. So there is my stand. I'm going to go ahead and put the clip on here for my cable organizer. I noticed that it's got a little tab in the back. There's a little cross shaped tab in there. What that is going to do is allow this to uh, fall into this little circular hole on the back here. So that's where it has to, it has to connect itself. So it will fall right into place. So I've slid it across there and it just clipped into place. So now that is assembled onto my upright arm. It is below where uh, the monitor will be because this box or, or, or um, excuse me, this mount here will adjust up and down like this. And when there's weight on it, it will come down and stay in place, uh, the weight of the monitor. Okay, so now that the stand is assembled, let's bring our monitor back in to the picture here. And I'll bring my stand over. Take a look at this rectangle here. Uh, there are two tabs off the side here. And then on the top edge, there are two black tabs up there. If you take a look at uh, the screen here, I'll just set this aside and see if I can show these. I'll tilt it up. There are two ports there. And then I'll rotate it this way. Not sure how well this will come out, but there are two, two uh, ports here that are a little bit closer together. The two farther apart, if I look at my mounting bracket again, these are far apart. These are close together. These are far apart. So that means these are going to need to go in up here. So I'll rotate this over and I will lift my monitor a little bit. They're in place. And now I'm just going to rotate this down until I hear a good click. It's not going to click. So I'm going to pull the little lever that I see here. And now it's fallen right into place. So I probably do need to pull that lever to my right right now. And then it clipped right into place and this went back to where it was and it is locked in right now. So before I rotate this over again, we're looking at the bottom edge where that big notch is and I have my uh, arm off to the side here. I'm holding up the left side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull on this and rotate it over. So now I can grab hold of things here and rotate this up into an upright position. So. We are almost there right now. So that's how it's going to stand up. Uh, you can do this from this position if you want and connect all of the peripherals that you want to use. Um, I'm going to turn it over again once more just so you can see where each of these plug into the device. So I will lift it up. I will use that styrofoam as a tray to set this onto. And I'm going to connect each of my peripherals here. So on my mouse here, I'll go ahead and plug that into the USB port that I see right down here. I'll lift it up, plug it in right there. It's not gonna hurt this to uh, fall around a little bit. Got a good long cable onto it. I'll bring in my keyboard here. This has got a good long cable as well. They have Velcro ties on them. So I'm gonna loosen this one up because I don't really want the keyboard flopping around when I move things. And I'm gonna set that off to my far right since I'm right-handed. And I will go ahead and tilt this up again so you can see the ports on the bottom there. And I'm going to plug this into the second port. So it'll be right plugged in right beside my mouse uh, down there. Again, this mouse has that Velcro so I can loosen that cable up when I'm ready. To my far right here, I have my power cable. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to my left now. And again, I'm doing this so that you can see it. Uh, looking at it right now, and the far left is where the power supply plugs in. So I'll go ahead and bring that in. I'm bringing it in with uh, the cable facing away from the back of the unit and plugging it into that round port right there. And now that is in place as well. So all of the uh, peripherals are now connected. Uh, I want to be a little bit careful when I rotate this back over because everything is connected, um, but it's not going to be hugely problematic. I'm going to take care here and just rotate this up by lifting it and bring it right around. And now I have my different cables hooked up. Here's my power cable. I'm going to move that over. Here is my keyboard. And there is my mouse. So I have my cables, my mouse, 
all of this is connected. Let me slide that away so it shows up a little bit better for you. So there are those things right there. And my power cable is over here. So the next step would be to go ahead and grab a power source. I happen to have one right here with me. Um, you'll want to probably use something with surge protection. And what that does is protect your unit when and if there is a power surge, say there's a lightning strike close by, anything like that, um, a surge protector is going to help prevent damage to your unit. Uh, so you want to use something like that, but go ahead and plug that in. And in this case, I'll need to turn that on. It's going to start charging my battery all re uh, as soon as I plug that in. So the next step that you're going to undertake here, let's slide this back a little bit, is to reach to the right now that I'm facing my unit. And again, this can be tilted up and down. So I have it tilted up right now and it can go up and down like this. And remember, I showed you that a moment ago so I can lower it down, it stays in place. So whatever level I need at, very nice. I can adjust my viewing angle however I'd like. So the next step will be to come to the right, press the power button to power this unit on. And then like any Windows device, uh, based upon when the image was installed onto it, it will have to run updates. This can take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, an hour and a half. It just depends on how many updates have been made available since the unit was assembled. And then you want to go back to that email you received with your software, download it, uh, install it by entering your username and password, follow through the steps, and you'll be up and running with the Prodigy software on your all-in-one PC in no time at all. I hope that you found this video to be useful in getting started with your all-in-one PC. As always, take a look at the description of this video and click on that feedback link to let us know how we're doing. The only way we can continue to improve our products and services is through your feedback. So please take the time to do that. Thanks for watching once again.